Hi, I'm Julie Brenninger and I'm the co-founder of Gold City Ventures. We launched the Etsy Principles course back in the summer and we've been having an absolute blast taking our students through the course. I started selling on Etsy two years ago when I was selling temporary tattoos to bachelorette parties. You know those gold foil tattoos that people put on their faces or on their wrists when they go out at night for the parties? Well, I absolutely loved selling on Etsy, but I hated having to ship the tattoos. That's when I heard about printables and I realized they're the perfect passive income product to sell on Etsy. I sell bachelorette scavenger hunts. They're printable PDFs that people can buy, download to their computers, print out at home, and take around with them when they're bar hop hopping for the scavenger hunt party crawl. I started making scavenger hunts for bachelorette parties and these are printable PDFs that I create one time, I upload them to Etsy and thousands of customers can download them. I think this year I only made one new product and last year I worked on it for just a few weekends and I made almost $6,000. This is the perfect passive income side hustle if you are looking for something with a low time investment and something that will be a quick win. Also it's kind of fun to make the printables. Now in the training today I'm going to take you through one, how to come up with good ideas for printables, two, how to create your printables, and then three, some graphic design tips for those of you like me who are not artistically inclined and probably didn't think you could do this starting out. We're gonna take you through some quick tips to make your printables look good. Now, don't be discouraged, you can do this. Even if you're not creative, if you don't think that people will buy your stuff, you'd be totally surprised. And if you can't think of an idea, I'm here to give you a whole bunch of ideas today. Let's go. So let me show you my shop really fast. This is it, the Swag Elephant. I sell bachelorette party games and decor. My top sellers are bachelorette scavenger hunts. These are scavenger hunts that I made using a free tool Canva that I'll show you how to use a little later. I made them one time. It took you know two hours of work for this one in particular, and I've sold that one over a couple hundred times, and I've made over $1,000 on that one particular product. I also bundle my games into packs. I know people really like bundles and the idea of buying more helps. So that's been really successful in my shop. And then recently I've branched out into invitations and other types of decor related to bachelorette parties. I love selling printables because it is an amazing passive income stream for me that requires very little effort. I have a podcast and a blog and I'm a new mom and I have a lot going on and I don't have time to invest in this side hustle. So I love how I can put a little bit of work in up front and then just kind of let it ride and watch the sales come in. So as of this recording, I have over 1,000 sales so far in my Etsy shop and I think I've put one listing up in 2019. So this is something that is, is truly can be passive income as long as you pick the right product and you get started on the right foot. So in this training today, I want to take you guys through a really quick how to get started with printables training. It's not going to be everything that we cover in the course, obviously, but it will be something to get your feet wet and get you start thinking about printables. So let's start here. First, let's think of an idea for you. Three main tips here. One, brainstorm seasonal trends. So when you're thinking about picking a product to sell on Etsy, remember that buyers are searching for very particular things in each time of year. It's November, so buyers are probably thinking about hosting Thanksgiving. Maybe they're hosting a Friendsgiving event. Maybe they're having their family over. Maybe they're just going to someone else's Thanksgiving party. What type of printables would a person that's hosting Thanksgiving need? Right now I can think of place cards. I can think of a menu planner. Maybe there are these fun kind of conversation sparking games like what are you thankful for? What are you grateful for? Things like that. Maybe they want to put up some Thanksgiving decor in their house and there's a I'm grateful for my family or some type of wall art that you can create that they would print out and frame in their house. There are so many seasonal ideas you can think of. And as you go throughout the calendar year, try to think about what seasonal products would people be searching on Etsy for at that time? So let's say it was January. In January, people are thinking, I want to get in shape. I want to save more money. Maybe I want to lose weight. Maybe I want to set certain financial goals. You can think of printables that can help people achieve those goals in that year. So I'm thinking budgeting spreadsheets, I'm thinking debt payoff trackers, maybe a weight loss tracker, maybe a calendar, a 2020 calendar, maybe some type of organizational binder to help them start the year on the right foot. 
The reason that you want to find a seasonal idea is that you want to take advantage of when the masses are searching on certain keywords on Etsy. You can pick something that you can sell year round that's totally fine, but if you want to make some quick sales, finding a seasonal product will probably be your best bet. So second thing, you should search Pinterest for ideas. Pinterest and Etsy go together like peanut butter and jelly. People are always searching for printables on Etsy. Pinterest and also on Etsy. Now you may think there are so many free printables on Pinterest. Why would someone go to Etsy? It's because it's hard to dig through Pinterest to find printables. But when you're trying to think of what type of ideas that may be working on Etsy, find ones that are working on Pinterest. So let me give you an idea here. So if you look on Pinterest, I typed in Thanksgiving printables. And what auto completes will help you. So kids printables seem pretty popular. Quotes, preschool, giving thanks. If it auto completes here, that probably means that people are typing it into Pinterest. It's an indication that that's maybe a, a popular printable to pick. Now, I searched Thanksgiving printables. Here's what came up. There's free coloring pages. I spy games. These look like little cards you can include in food if you're gifting them to friends. Thanksgiving jokes to start conversation around the dinner table. I see Thanksgiving planners. I see pictures about the st stuffing and some grateful signs. There's so much that you can find on Pinterest that can spark some ideas for you to sell on Etsy. Now, sometimes bloggers will give away printables to their audience if someone is interested in giving this away, it kind of is a good indicator that there's a demand for this and maybe you could sell that on Etsy. Now, you never want to copy anyone else, but perhaps you can draw inspiration from a bunch of different bloggers or resources to create something really unique and you that you can create and upload to Etsy. Now, next, you can use Google Trends to think find trending topics to sell on Etsy. So I'll quickly take you to Google Trends. Now Google Trends will tell you year over year how much something is more popular essentially in the current year. So I searched printables and this is showing interest over time in terms of search volume and specifically what, what states. But as you can see in related queries, Baby shark printables are up 600% year over year. Now, having a child who may be crying in the background right now, good luck to my husband. Um, if it's up 600% year over year, that's a good sign that, hey, this is a trending topic. Maybe I should create some type of baby shark printable. If you are using pop culture or some type of thing that is happening in the news or maybe it's some type of thing that's happening in the niche or demographic that you're in, that's a great printable to create and it'll help you stand out because maybe everyone is creating Christmas planners, but maybe you know that Elf on the Shelf is trending and you could do some type of Elf on the Shelf planning kit for parents or something like that and your, your printable will distinguish itself among everyone else and it's a really cool idea. Next, you want to make the product. So making the product may seem kind of intimidating, but you do not have to be a graphic designer to make your products. I promise you, my products are not fancy. I try my best, but they're not the most beautiful things ever, but they do sell and you don't need to intimidate yourself. You'll get better with every single printable. The first thing you do need to do is find fonts and graphics that are okay for commercial use. So what that means, if you are using a font for personal use, let's say that your kid is having a birthday party and you're making invitations and you're just going to give them out to the 10 families that are attending the party. You can use whatever font you want pretty much and it's okay. But if you are using the font in a printable and you're going to upload to Etsy and sell it, you have to make sure that the font is okay for commercial use. All fonts usually come with some sort of instructions or licensing that tell you how you can use the font. Google Fonts is always free. You can use go to fonts.google.com and that will give you a whole list of fonts that you can download to your computer and upload them. In our course, we explain to you exactly how to do this, but you will find some great tutorials online if you need help installing a font on your computer. One tip that I use is I actually buy my fonts. 
So let me show you where I buy them. I go on Creative Market, and this is one of my favorite places to shop as an Etsy seller. Everything is very inexpensive here, but you can buy digital files that you can use in printables. So here's a handwritten font collection where you can get, it looks like over you know 50 different types of fonts. This is a really good place to find scripted fonts. It's important in the bachelorette space for me to have really cutesy fonts. That's what the buyers expect. So I often have to buy the font to get it. But you can find a free font that's okay for commercial use. Websites such as Font Squirrel or Duff Font are places that we will get fonts that we can use that are okay. Also on Creative Market and other sites, you can find different types of art like PNGs that are okay for commercial use. So let's say that you did want to make a Thanksgiving printable. You can go and search for pumpkin watercolor like I did and you can download one of these graphic packs that will give you different pictures that you can put in your printable. Now you can also find some free ones like websites, Pixabay, Pexels, they have free stock photos, they may have free illustrations. You need to check to make sure that you can use the graphics again in an end product for resale. And that's why here, if you click on one of the products, they will have different types of licensing options. And for this, um, commercial use is okay. Extended commercial is if you are selling over like a certain amount of copies. Typically, the extended commercial is not something you have to worry about up front. It would be fantastic if you sold over the threshold that they require for extended commercial license, but you can always upgrade that later. It's kind of rare for you to sell a couple thousand of the same design, so I wouldn't worry about that. And then personal, obviously, is not that doesn't apply to you. Now, in terms of fo other fonts places, I use the free design to tool Canva and they do have fonts and graphics within Canva that you can use. If it is a free graphic or font, it's okay to include that in your printable from Canva. If it is something that you have to pay for in Canva, like let's say you're paying a dollar for a, p a watercolor pumpkin picture, you can't use that in your printable. Only the free ones for Canva. So just a heads up if you decide to use this design tool, so many of us are using it just because it is free that you should only use the free icons within the tool in your printable. Now that piece of information may seem overwhelming. We do cover it in more detail in the course. It's something that will become second nature to you as you start becoming familiar with Etsy and you get your shop listed. At the beginning, it's kind of a learning curve, but I promise you, you'll get over it, you'll understand it, and you don't have to be scared about messing up. It's okay. Okay, so in terms of making the product, so I just showed you Canva and I'll quickly take you through how to create a printable in Canva in a second, but you don't have to get fancy with this. If you have any of the Adobe products on your computer, that's fantastic, like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, but if you don't have those, don't even worry about it. A free tool is totally fine. I know people who are crushing it making printables with PowerPoint. Microsoft PowerPoint. You can make it with Google Docs. If you have a Mac, you can make it with Apple Pages. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just learn to use the tool that you have available to you. iPicky is another great free one that you can use online. Learn to use these tools that are available to you and you will crush it. Now, over time, as your budget grows, you may want to upgrade to Adobe, but you don't actually have to. The printable that I showed you, the scavenger hunt that has made me over a thousand dollars. I made that in Canva and that's, it was free. It wasn't something that I made on a fancy site. Okay. So three graphic design tips really fast before I show you how to make a printable in Canva. The first one, use lots and lots of white space. Some people like to crowd their printables with a whole bunch of different stuff and it just doesn't look good. The less is more approach is something that you should use. Second, use two fonts or less. You may get carried away, and we all do, with a bunch of cool fonts, but if you have three different fonts on one page, it's going to look a little distracting. Three, limit color in the background. So have you ever printed out a piece of paper with a lot of color and then you picked it up and it was soggy and wet and just kind of gross? That is not something that you want in, in a printable that a customer is going to print at home. If you think the customer will print it at home, make sure that you limit the color in the background. A white background will look better probably. Um, be very minimal about the color. 
Now, if they will print it out at a professional print shop, it's okay to use color because it's going to be printed typically on maybe cardstock or thicker paper. But something that a customer will print at home, if even if the baby blue background that you have looks beautiful on your computer screen, when they print it out on their home printer, it's just not going to look good. I'll quickly show you some examples in my own shop of where I probably should have used a little more white space. So even my best seller here, my bachelorette scavenger hunt, I honestly would have shrunken that and done a little bit more white border around the edges. Another thing too is that things can get cut off. So for example, my uh, sign here, I guess it's supposed to be sort of like a mug shot um, for bachelorette parties. When someone prints this out on a home piece of paper, it actually has like a little white line on the end of it and it doesn't look that great. So I probably shouldn't have done gold right to the edge. Now I'm getting better as I go along, but uh, this is something that I've learned over time, uh, some graphic design hacks that will just make my stuff look just a little bit better. And as I mentioned before, it's all a learning process. So obviously I put stuff up that didn't use the best graphic design and it, I still got sales on it and I'm just learning as I go. So don't be intimidated. You don't have to be a graphic designer or have everything figured out right away. It's really just about getting started and every week just push the ball forward just a little bit more and soon, soon you'll have this profitable Etsy passive income stream coming in that's pretty amazing. Okay, so let's go back to making the product. I want to show you guys how I use Canva really fast to make printables. So I'm going to canva.com. I click create a design and click custom dimensions. I'm going to go to inches. I'll do letter size eight and a half by 11, but you can enter in anything that you want. So Canva has an artboard and you can go to text and you can add your own headings. Now Canva does have templates of printables. You can't use one of their templates and edit it and sell it on Etsy. It's against their rules. You have to make your own. You can use one of theirs for inspiration, but don't edit theirs and sell theirs as tempting as it is. So you change the font, you change the font size and the color up the top here. So I'm just going to make a quick example here to show you how easy it is to use Canva. So let's say that you want to change the color. I click the A here and I can change it to any color. I have some colors saved in my brand kit, but if you want to find a color, you just click the plus and you do it here. Now see these numbers? This is a hex code. You can find hex codes on Google if you just Google like purple hex code or gold hex code to find one that you like. Canva also has a color palette generator where you can upload any picture and it will give you the hex code for that picture. What's really cool about using that tool in Canva and Google it to find it is that you can get a picture on Pinterest. Usually weddings and like nurseries and rooms are very well coordinated when it comes to colors. Find a picture of a bunch of colors that you like, upload that to the Canva color palette generator and it will spit out a bunch of colors for you. Write down those hex codes or save it in like, if you have a Mac, you can save it in a shared note or something like that. And then you can enter it here and you can find the hex code that matches. So I just, I knew that white was this, but you know, whatever you enter in, it will find that color for you. Okay, so I'll just go back and do this. Now, if you go under elements, there are all these free elements that I mentioned that are okay to use in printables. So here's some type of like cool design here. You can search, I'm gonna search for a box, but you can search for anything. Now I mentioned here that you can't use these in templates, the ones that are paid. Do not use those, you can't use them. But anything that's free, you can use. Don't put too many doodads on your printables though. I don't think it actually looks good. I think keeping it minimal looks better. So I showed you the search piece, but let's scroll down. I wanna show you uh, shapes. So if you ever wanna make some square boxes, and by the way, you center in Canva by dragging. You can see here, it shows me what's the center line. I'm gonna make some boxes here. Just make two columns. And then I'm Control C, Control V-ing here. Copy pasting just to get this. 
Okay. And I'm clicking here and I want to make this white. All right. So that's a quick way you can make boxes. I could obviously make the lines a little bit thinner if I wanted. And again, control V, control V. Up here, I'll show you what these mean. So there's the duplicate button. So I didn't have to do the control paste if I didn't want to. Um, there's positioning where I can move something forward or back. So this is, I've selected the gray box. If I do forward, it now comes on top of the white box position. I can send it backward again. I can do alignments here. Um, I can do opacity. So let's say that I think that gray is just like two in your face. I could drag it down to maybe 40% translucent. And I think maybe that looks better. Given the advice I gave you to not use crazy color in your printable, especially if it's something that will be printed at home, it might be good to bring down the opacity and just make everything just a little bit lighter. Okay, so um, there are some shapes here. Quickly going through, so we talked about using elements. They have like little icons and things that you can use. They have lines. If I wanted to add a, a cool line here, if I thought that looked good. I could go through and I could make a whole bunch of a whole bunch of sub boxes in here if I wanted to. There's so much that you can do in Canva. Now, when you're done making your design, you click this little arrow here and you download it. You now, depending on what you want to make, like let's say that you were making clip art or something, you could click transparent background. That's only available to people that pay for Canva Pro. I have upgraded my Canva account because I, I like using Canva so much. It's fairly inexpensive, but you don't need to do this starting out. For most people though, if you're making like a printable one pager that's going to be printed let on a letter, then you can just do PDF print quality and download the PDF and upload it to Etsy. Now, if you are doing something else, like maybe you're doing invitations that people will print at Walmart or something like that, you can download as a PNG or a JPEG. Typically, PNGs are better quality than JPEG and PDF print is a better quality than PDF standard. The reason that I did PDF print is that I want to print at the highest quality because when the person prints it out at home, I want it to look as close as it can to the digital image and not be fuzzy and not look like really pixelated or something like that. So you want to definitely download the highest quality possible. And then all you do is you download this to your computer and you upload it to Etsy. Now it's as simple as that. Now I say it's simple, but there's obviously a lot that goes into it because you need to pick the right product you need to, once you have the product, you need to upload it to your Etsy shop, open your Etsy shop, and then you need to use keywords and a whole bunch of things to make sure that your printable is seen and purchased by customers. So I am an expert at Etsy search engine optimization or SEO. It ensures that when someone, for my particular shop, when someone types in bachelorette party games into Etsy, do my listings appear in the search results? And you definitely want your listings to appear in the search results. That's how it gets found. So you have to know how to tag things certain ways, how to put your printables in the right categories, and also market in places like Pinterest and other places. So that leads me to the last step is letting you know about my course. So my friend Cody and I have created a course um, through our business Gold City Ventures and we're opening the course on Thursday and it'll be available through Sunday. Along with the course, we have a Facebook group that is my favorite part of this course. It's only available to members and you get it free for the first 30 days. As you're going through the course, which are videos and text lessons, join the group and we have assignments that you actually do within the Facebook group. We have Cody and I in there to answer any questions you have. If you get stuck on lesson two, just write on the Facebook wall, hey, I'm stuck, this is what I'm doing, and we'll come and we'll answer for you. We have two other Facebook um, Etsy experts that are in the Facebook group that are there to answer your questions too. We have Jenny, who's a Pinterest marketing expert, and Kevin, who actually 
was one of my Etsy students last year who has since made over $10,000. Kevin is crushing it on Etsy and he'll be in there along with Jenny to answer any question you have. We also have graphic design and user experience office hours twice per month. So mid-month at the end of the month, we have special threads with Nicole and Jamie who are our UX and graphic design experts. And you can put your listings in the comments of that thread. A thread is a Facebook group comment. And they will go through and they'll give you feedback if you wish. This is totally optional, but it's really fun. And then once a week on Wednesdays, Cody and I will go live where we also will answer your questions or we'll just give away prizes. And we always give away prizes that are related to your Etsy shop. So sometimes we do gift cards to Creative Market. Sometimes we'll give away a 100-page Pinterest ebook or we'll give away a Canva online course. Uh, we give away a lot of courses. So it's super fun and it's always fun to win, but it's it, we have a good time every week going live with everyone in the course. So moral of the story is that we're here to help you in this course and we want you to succeed. We have had some students who have had some crazy success in this course. Jennifer, for example, um, she had, I think she has over 150 sales so far on her Etsy shop, which is in the wedding invitation space. We have another Jennifer, actually, who joined the course a few weeks ago, and she made $100 in her first three weeks. She sells Halloween bingo games and Thanksgiving games. So she's crushing it with the printable holiday game thing. But we have people in all different niches who are doing really well. So we would love to have you join us. We have a great time with this course. We have a lot of fun. And I know that I found Etsy to be a creative and fun passive income stream. I'm almost at over $6,000 so far with very minimal work with this side hustle. I absolutely love it. And I can't wait to meet you all. Our course is available for sale just this week through Sunday. Go to goldcityventures.com. We would absolutely love to have you in the course.